we are starting a new message series today entitled Keeping It Fresh. Keeping It Fresh. I don't think there's anything quite as satisfying as fresh things. Have you ever walked into the house and um, maybe somebody was, was baking your favorite, cooking your favorite meal? When you walk through the door and before you could even get two steps in, you could smell what was going on in the kitchen. Or how about some of those fresh baked cookies that, that are your, your favorite cookies that, uh, that are cooked for you. And as soon as you walk through, man, you know, you're like, oh, aren't you drawn by that? Um, my wife, we just purchased a brand new um, carpet cleaner. And so she's been going through the house and doing some of the carpets. And I'll walk in after the day and I could just tell when she's freshened everything up. And I walk in and that's just that, that smell that everything's been cleaned and shampooed. And it just smells, smells so good that goes throughout the house. Um, I'll never forget, though, this one experience I had with my brother-in-law, uh, when, uh, excuse me, my stepbrother Wayne, when I went to visit him out in uh, Texas, he took me to this uh, seafood restaurant and he recommended to me, he said, I want you to order the shrimp. Now, I've had a lot of shrimp in my life over the years. How many of you love seafood? Any seafood lovers out there? Well, Wayne is a real connoisseur of, 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 of seafood and fish. He's a tremendous fisherman and all of those things. He says, just trust me on this. Trust me. Order the shrimp. In fact, I'll order for you. So he, he, he orders everything up and he says, these shrimp are like nothing you've ever tasted. And so that kind of intrigued me because I've had a lot of shrimp in my life. And so they bring the shrimp out and I begin to dig into these shrimp and he was right. They weren't like anything that I'd ever tasted before. They were just absolutely delicious. And, and he's looking at me for approval. How do you like them? Are, are they good? I mean, are they like anything you've ever tasted? And I said, no, Wayne, these things are amazing. What's the difference about these shrimp? And he said, the difference is, he says, the shrimp that they bring in here from the time they catch them down in the Gulf to bring them in are only a matter of hours by the time they hit your plate. And he said, shrimp just taste different when they are fresh. After a few hours, they don't ever taste the same. And I have to tell you, he was right. I've never had shrimp like that again. And it was absolutely amazing. There's something about fresh that excites us satisfies us and sustains us. And then the thought hit me. It's no different with our relationship with God. There is something about fresh that is needed when it comes to our relationship with the Lord. How many of you know we need to keep our relationship with the Lord fresh? There is nothing like a fresh word from the Lord. There's nothing like fresh worship. There's nothing like a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing like a fresh move of God when he comes and moves in our life and in our family. But the problem for far too many of us is we haven't had a fresh move of God in our lives in years. When this happens, our relationship with the Lord can become stale and stagnant. And just like the term fresh brings with it a reaction, how many of you know so does the term stale? Stale signifies something that's old, no longer fresh. It's hard, it's musty, it's dried out. It's past the, stale, uh, past the sale date. Think about some of the things that maybe you've come across that were stale. I don't know if you've ever gone into the refrigerator and, and, and wanted to pour yourself a glass of milk and that, that milk was past the sale date. How many of you have ever done that before? Whew, not good. Not good. 
Or you go to reach for the bread and you open it up and it's, it's hard. It's all, it's all dried out. Or how about that bag of chips that's in there and you, you're looking around. And you, oh, you found a hidden bag that was back there. And you pull it out because you, you want to munch down on a few chips. And you take that first bite of stale old chips. How many of you have experienced that before? You see, there's a danger for every believer that's here today. If we're not careful, our relationship with God can become stale. The Bible warns us of the dangers of a stale relationship. The people in the church of Ephesus were, Ephesus were by all count good people. They were faithful to the house of God. In fact, the Lord had complimented them on how true to the word they were how they were hard workers, how they didn't tolerate evil among them, and how they were faithful to the house of the Lord. But right after he compliments them for all of these things, look with me at Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. He says these words to them. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. What was God saying? He was saying, you're just going through the motions. No, you haven't fallen away, but you've fallen a long way. The fire is gone. The passion is gone. The love isn't what it once used to be. And you need a fresh touch once again. This description of the people of Ephesus describes how many are in the church today. Yes, you are here. Yes, you are faithful. No, you haven't fallen away. Yes, you serve. Yes, you believe in sound doctrine. No, you don't tolerate evil. But you haven't had a fresh touch from God in a long, long, long time. When we arrive here, there's something that we tend to do. When our relationship grow stale with the Lord and we're going through the motions, we begin to romanticize the past and not fully live in the present. Our conversation about the times God has moved in our lives always now moved to the past tense. It's always in the realm of, I remember when. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with remembering. Remembering when God touched you. Remembering when he spoke to you. When he moved mightily in your lives years ago. But if you are lacking present day examples of God moving in the here and now, you have fallen. You have slipped like the church of Ephesus. Listen to me. God never intended for a miracle from 5, 10, or 15 years ago to be the only thing you have to talk about today. He has miracles for you today. He has a fresh touch for you now. He has a fresh word for you now. Yesterday's miracles and moves of God in our lives were never intended to supplant what God wants to do today in the here and now. How many of you believe that this morning? I look at it this way. My mom made some wonderful meals for me growing up. She was a fabulous cook. I can close my eyes and remember how awesome the holidays were together. And maybe your family was a bit like mine. We'd all come together. And my mom, she would make special family meals for us all that I always looked forward to when I would come over. She had a special kind of gravy that went on the turkey. She made coconut cream pies that were to die for. How many of you have some favorite meals that yet your mom or somebody in your family cooks that only they can do? it that way I have those kinds of meals that I think about in my life but here's what I want you to know my my mom passed away 29 years ago and as wonderful as those meals were how many of you know they do absolutely nothing to sustain me today the memory of her meals, as wonderful as they are, do nothing to nourish me today. How many of you know, I need a meal now. I need a meal today. And this is the way God intended for our relationship with him to be. A fresh word, fresh fire, fresh touch, fresh infilling in the here and now. 
I see this principle laid out in scripture. And I want us to look at uh, a story that's going to play this out. I want to talk to you about the children of Israel in the desert. Let me set the story up real quick if I could. Many of you know the story. The Israelites had been held captive in Egypt for 430 years. And God sends them a deliverer. What's his name? Moses shows up to deliver the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt to take them into the promised land. Now along this journey, the people were faced with some real challenges. The first thing I want you to understand is how many people were exiting and going out of Egypt during this time. Look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 37. It says, there were about 600,000 men of foot besides women and children. So scholars believe, they estimate this number was anywhere from 2.5 million to 6 million individuals that were exiting Egypt all at the same time. Do you know how many people are in the greater Sacramento area, the seven counties of Sacramento? 2.6 million people live in the greater Sacramento area. Can you imagine if we all decided to leave this city at one time on foot? What would that look like? So they ran into some real concerns right out of the gate as they headed on into the desert. And the two concerns that came to them were, what are we going to drink and what are we going to eat? What are we going to do with 2.6 million people as we head out into the desert? Well, they came to the point in the story where the people were getting hungry and they needed some food. And so Moses stands up before this large crowd of people as God had spoken to him. And in Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, we find an answer. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. How cool would that have been? The next day, the Israelites, after hearing this, they go out in the morning and they see flakes that look like frost all over the ground. And so they say to Moses, what is this? We find the answer in Exodus 16, verse 15. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. Fresh bread coming down from heaven to nourish, to strengthen, to satisfy, and to sustain, you, to sustain you. How many of you know God wants to rain down some fresh bread on all of us today? You see, the fresh bread that comes to us today and the here and now isn't the flakes of bread that came to the children of Israel in the desert. The fresh bread is bread of a different kind, and it's identified in the New Testament. Look with me at what Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 32, 33, and 35. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who gives you the bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Look at verse 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What happens in the desert was a type and shadow of things to come. It was a shadow of what was coming in the New Testament. Yes, they received bread from God in the desert. But as Vine's word study puts it, it says, the real bread was still coming and his name is Jesus. Here's the point. The fresh bread that nourishes, sustains, and satisfies, and strengthens us is Jesus Christ himself. How many of you are thankful for the bread of heaven named Jesus today that has satisfied your life with good things? Now, since the bread from heaven in the Old Testament was a pattern, it was a pattern of things to come, I want us to go back and I want you to see how God has designed this to work. What is this pattern that's laid out in Scripture? Look at Exodus chapter 16, verse 16 through 19. Follow me, follow with me if you would. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. 
The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they had needed. Then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it until morning. So let's look at the pattern that's important for us today. Point number one, write it down if you would. Fresh bread daily. This is the key to understanding what a fresh touch and a fresh move of God in your life is all about. How many of you would agree with me this morning that when God provided fresh manna from heaven, he could have done it any way that he wanted to? Meaning this, if he rained down bread from heaven, he certainly could have preserved it for a week at a time, could he not have? He could have preserved it for a month. He even could have preserved it for a year where it would not have spoiled and it would have lasted the entire time that they had it. But I want you to notice that God did something here. He didn't preserve it for a week or a month or a year. How many of you know they had to go out and they had to pick up the fresh bread what? Daily. Let's look at it. Here's what it says, verse 16 through 19. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need to take an omer for each person you have in your tent. Verse 19, then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it until morning. Do you know how long this pattern lasted for them? An entire generation, it sustained them for 40 years. Now, why would God do it this way? He would establish that he is the God of fresh bread daily. Fresh bread daily. You'd not live after yes, yesterday's miracles or provisions. How many of you know his mercies are new every morning? Anybody thankful for that today? You can trust me. God is saying you can trust me every single day of your life. How many of you have a favorite coffee shop or donut place that you like to go to in the morning? Is there a special place that you like to go to every single morning? And one of the reasons you probably like to go there is because you know you're going to get something fresh every single day. You're going to get a fresh cinnamon roll, a fresh donut, a fresh cup of coffee. It brings you in every single day. You see, God was establishing right from the start when the true bread of heaven comes, you can trust him every day of your life. I am the God, listen to this, who breaks fresh bread every single morning. He's saying, I'm open for business today. You can count on me every day of your life. 24-7, you can come to me. I'm the God of the fresh miracle, a fresh touch, a fresh word, and a fresh anointing. My operation in your life and miracle working power upon your life will be on a continual basis. What has happened to so many of us? Why have we settled for memories of yesteryear? Here's point number two, write it in. Old, stale bread. When Moses told the children of Israel what the Lord had said about this daily bread, guess what happened? Some didn't listen. Can you imagine that? Can you even imagine? Some people didn't listen. I mean, that's hard to imagine, isn't it? Some of them didn't listen. Well, listen to what it says in Exodus 16, 20. Pick up the story. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. There's several things that jump out to me. I want you to write them in if you would. First, here it is. It was an indictment against God's character. Those that gathered and kept it in their tent till the next morning. They were in essence saying, God, I don't believe you are true to your word. They had trust issues as do some of us. For some of us, because of our trust issues and because of our relationship with God has grown a bit stale, it is easier to reminisce about past provision than to believe for today's promise. God was telling the Israelites and us, I'm the God of today. 
I want to speak today. I want to move in your life and family today. I want to provide today. You see, when our relationship with God begins to grow stale, the first thing that goes is trust. The second thing I see from this, write it in, they trusted the provision more than the provider. What does it say about the people who wouldn't listen? They gathered as much as they could get. They, they took all of that into their tent. Here's the thought that comes to me. God, I know you provide today, but I'm not sure you'll show up tomorrow. So I'm going to gather as much as I can and live off it as long as I can. I trust your provision. Do you see the subtle shift that's going on there? Once they gathered as much as they could, they didn't need to trust a provider anymore. They trusted the provision. How many of us go through that subtle shift in our lives? God provides for you, right? You prayed for a good job. God, I, I need a good job. I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll do whatever you want me to do. You got on your knees and you believed for a miracle. And then that job showed up in your life. Good money, good pay. Everything was wonderful. And then as time got, has gone on, all of a sudden, I am trusting the provision of the job more than I am the one that has provided it for me. What if he came and spoke and said, hey, that job now is getting a little bit in the way of Sunday activity. That job's getting in a little way of your spiritual life. Or hey, I want you to move somewhere else. And we're like, wait a minute, God. No, this, the, the pay is too good. The life is too good. And God is saying to you, do you trust the provision or the provider? Who do you trust more? It's a subtle shift that happens with a lot of us. How many of you know God doesn't want to be replaced by what he's provided for you? That's why it's so important to have fresh bread or else we settle and we dream of the days gone by. Here's what you need to remember. Our past was great, but our past is not our future. Number three, it's not in your notes. Somehow it's been left out in there under this point. So you can just write it in under the lines that are there and it's not even gonna show up uh, on the uh, outline today. I don't know exactly what happened, but write this in, a good thing gone bad. A good thing gone bad bad. What happened to the fresh bread God provided? Look at Exodus 16, 20. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. Now, when I read this, I get funny images in my mind. And I would think out of 2.5 million people, there had to be some hoarders that were in the group that were out there. There had to be some hoarders. You ever seen that show Hoarders before? There had to be some that paid absolutely no attention and they went out and they filled their tent with this stuff. They went out and gathered as much as they possibly could. They filled every corner of their tent. They're like, man, I'm going to get all I can get. Come on, honey. Let's gather it up and fill this tent up. What do you think their tent looked like the next morning? Oh, they woke up to a wonderful morning surprise, didn't they? Here's the takeaway. See, God did provide the fresh bread, but something that was once to be celebrated has now become a curse. Something that was once a sweet aroma is now a stench. Something that was once a blessing has now become bondage. You see, when our past blessings replace our present relationship, it's no longer blessed by God. The fresh bread was only blessed for a certain amount of time. I put this down in my notes. God's blessing had an expiration date. Do you know why? Here's the reason why. Because more blessings were on the way. God didn't want him to stay there. He said, listen, yes, I blessed you here. But you can get up tomorrow morning. I have a new blessing for you tomorrow. If an old world word, an old miracle, old experience, old blessing has outlived its expiration date, it might no longer be blessed. It's exactly what happened to the manna. And number three, third point today as we press on, I'm the God of the fresh. When we idolize past provision, 
and it replaces present fresh moves of God in our lives, it's a problem. God wants to give you a fresh touch, a fresh word, a fresh blessing, a fresh miracle, a fresh infilling of his Holy Spirit. Here's what we must recognize about why keeping it fresh is so important. Write this in if you would. If we are living in the past, it can be an indicator of what's not happening in the present. This is why God sets the example in the Old Testament of coming to him daily for fresh bread because someday the true bread of heaven would come and his name is Jesus. And over and over again, we see God's desire and his, and his intent was for us to be with him on a regular basis. How many of you know Jesus wants you to meet with him daily? Not just once a week, not Philip to Philip on Sunday. How many of you know he wants to give you fresh bread every single morning? He's got something new for you every day. We are admonished in scripture as I bring this to a close. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Listen to what it says about our relationship. It says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor in serving the Lord. Our focus on this verse is, is usually on the first part, never be lacking in zeal. But I want to focus on the last portion, but keep your spiritual fervor in serving the Lord. My question is, what is spiritual fervor? What does that even mean? The term fervor comes from the Greek word zeal. And the, the, the word zeal means to boil, to be hot. And then the commentary said, the, the writer had in mind the idea of the sound of boiling water that's boiling out of the pot. How many of you have ever put something on the stove? Uh, maybe it was water or something else, soup. You went into the other room and you forgot about leaving it on the, the burner. Have you ever done that before? All of a sudden you start to hear this sound, don't you? Of, of, of something that's kind of steaming and going up and over and all of a sudden you're reminded oh my word and we head into the kitchen the writer had in mind when he talks about your zeal for the Lord that you're like a, a pot that can't be contained we would say it this way in modern day man he is on fire for the Lord Man, she is on fire. It can't be quenched. It's just coming all out of that person. They are fired up for the Lord. And you see, it's my desire today, new life, that we be a church. Yes, we do a lot of good works and we serve in a lot of great areas. And yes, we are faithful to the word and believe in preaching the word. And yes, we believe in rightly dividing scripture. But if we do all of that and we lose our first love and we're no longer on fire, how many of you know the Lord has something to say to us today? He's saying, new life. I want to bring a fresh move. How many of you want a fresh move of God in your life? How many of you know, I appreciate revivals of past. Praise God for them. I, I've seen them. I've lived through them. And I thank God for them. But how many of you know, God's got fresh bread for today. He wants to move today. And so this morning, we have saved some time. I'd like every head bowed and every eye closed for a moment. Maybe you're here today and you are faithful to God's house. Yeah. You believe wholeheartedly in his word. You serve. But if you were to be 100% honest today, if I had a scale that showed how on fire, how fresh your relationship is with the Lord, what would it look like? Where would that scale be? I want you to think about when you talk about the Lord's operation in your life, is it in the here and now? Or is it always past tense? It is always something that was done in yesteryear. And I'm here to tell you today, that's not the way God intended it to be. He's got fresh bread for you today. And he's serving it hot this morning. And if you just need a, a fresh move of God, how about fresh worship? Where you just get lost in his presence. A fresh touch. A fresh outpouring. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm hungry for a fresh move of God in my life and in my family and in this church. And maybe you would recognize you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, 
that's me, man. I just want, I, I want a fresh touch of God again. I want a fresh move of God again. Things have grown a little bit stale. What I'm going to do this morning is we're just going to open the altars and the worship team is ready, ready to lead us. And, and whether you're already on fire or you're like, I need to come down and I need, I need God to just pour in me today. It's been a long time since I've visited that altar, but God, I'm ready. I'm ready for an outpouring. I need something fresh today. If that's you, I just want to see this altar filled with people this morning. If we could bring the house lights down as we all stand this morning. And I'm just going to encourage you. If you just want a fresh touch this morning, you want a fresh outpouring, you want a fresh word, you want a fresh miracle, you want something fresh. I don't even want to say it any longer. You just get down here right now. Don't even wait a second longer. Maybe it's been years since you've come to an altar. You've sat back for years. Yeah, you're faithful to God's house, but the fire has not been there in a long time. What are you waiting for? Things have grown stale. Isn't it time for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life? again. And so today I'm just going to encourage you to lift your hands to heaven and for you to just spend time with the Lord this morning as the worship team brings us into the presence of God this morning. We have some time left at the end. And so as they lead us, I just want you to press into his presence this morning. Thank you, Lord.